Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I think will be our first video that I post or post some woodworking. So I'm gonna try and capture as much as I can, the best I can, trying to go over what I'm doing. Um, so my fiance and I are moving in about a month, maybe right around just about a month. Uh, we need some new end tables and we need a new TV stand. So today I'm gonna to be building some end tables. Uh, the idea that I got for these, uh, I was looking through Pinterest and I found a set of end tables that I liked. So I set out to build those. And then uh, last night I was scrolling through YouTube and I actually found the guy that built them and I watched that video. Um, so I'm pretty much just doing what he did. I'm doing it, I'm actually doing it and I'm doing it in my shop. Uh, so you've seen our shop. We definitely have, uh, we have a good start at some woodworking tools. I bought a Craig jig for pocket holes today. Um, a little bit nicer than the last one I have. But we have a start and we still have more tools to buy and I got some sheeting for that uh, TV stand. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna get started. That should be hopefully pretty quick. Get it get everything cut to length, get all my pieces cut, and then I'm just going to start putting them together. So I'll try and get you guys set up as much as I can, talk as much as I can. So I'm doing the legs first. They are, the table's total height is going to be 24 inches, so I need to cut, cut it to 23 and a quarter because my top piece will be three quarter thick. Um, I'm building two of these, so I need four legs a piece. And I'm doing it out of one by six, so I should be able to get two legs out of each 23 and a quarter cut, if that makes sense, because uh, I'll work them down. Um, I'm gonna start cutting these. I need eight total legs, so I'm gonna get cut four to four sections of one by six out at 23 and a quarter. So I'll show you guys that. Okay, so I got those four boards cut. Uh, whenever you're doing, uh, when you want to cut pieces to the same length, make sure you use the same piece as the template. Otherwise, your variation can get off a little bit more than you want. Just like that, we got perfect and all the same in theory, anyways. But I'm gonna get these ripped in half, so then we'll have our eight total legs, and I'll start building the supports on those sides and stuff. Got all those ripped in half. I got eight legs now. All our legs cut for both tables. Cut those in about five to ten minutes total. Both parts go quick. Uh, now I gotta figure out what my measurements and stuff will be for the braces in between. I'm also gonna have a drawer in these, so I'll have to figure that out as well. So these next pieces will be nine by five inches. So I got those just ripped down to, or cut down to nine inches. So I'm gonna rip them down to five now. Okay, so I think I have every piece that I need made except for um, the drawer pieces. I will get to those once I get the whole outer skeleton of this thing framed up. But this is pretty much all it is. I'm gonna say two one by six by tens for all of this. 
maybe a little bit less. I had a tiny bit of scrap, but uh, not too bad. I think it was about 10 bucks in lumber for this so far. Uh, I'll keep track on how much I use and give you guys kind of a rundown on how much it costs and see how much time it takes as well. So I got the numbers kind of ran for the end table build here. Um, I want to say I use three one by sixes by tens. Uh, that might have been, I think that might be more than I actually use, maybe half of one. But each of those were about 10 bucks a piece. I didn't go for the fancy one bys by any means. I just went with standard pine. So you can use standard pine as long as you're looking for the best boards. Otherwise, they can get pretty rough if you're not paying too much attention. Uh, so those ran me probably about 30 bucks, and that was, like I said, it's not all I used for the drawer slides. I want to say they were 8 bucks for the pair, and then the handles were shop stock. So, Okay, so that pocket hole jig I bought today might be one of the most handy tools I've bought for woodworking personally. Um, this thing was 100 bucks, and hand clamps in there like that, which is so much easier than actually putting a clamp on it for every single pocket hole. Plus it's got the spacings right for, if you want to have a wider board, you can do wider holes, or if you have a skinnier board, you can do skinnier holes. I think I did all these pocket holes on four, six, eight, 12, 16 boards in probably 10 minutes. Some of them have two, all of them have two, I think, except for these skinnier, small ones, but we made quick work of it. It was awesome i i love that thing now but i'm gonna start assembling i'll get you guys up to push that small life hack if you use your hands to wipe wood glue have a spare piece of wood right next to you so you can wipe your finger off instead of wiping on your pants like i know everybody does because i'm one of those people so here i go i start putting everything together. Uh, this whole process was, it wasn't too bad for me being new to woodworking. Um, I'd say the biggest thing to do in woodworking is the glue. The hardest thing to do is keep the wood glue off your projects because if you don't sand them off and then they dry and you have to, or if you don't wipe them off, sorry. If you don't wipe them off and then they dry, then you have to either sand them off or scrape off the wood glue. And then if you miss some wood glue while you're sanding, then you have to worry about your stain. Your stain not going to stain over wood glue. So you have to be conscious of that as well. I think I already went through the best tools I had for going through this process. I think building end tables like this, I had pretty much all the best tools that I could have for it. I don't really think anything would have made it much easier other than maybe a planer, but I, like I said in the video, it's, you, I'm pretty sure you can't run these boards through a planer if you have um, pocket screws in them, just because if the planer hits it, you're going to have issues, so you could just wood glue it and leave it at that, but like I said, I'm an impatient woodworker at this point, so I don't really like to wait for the glue to dry, even though it doesn't take super long. Especially with the blue tight bond, it dries pretty, it's pretty fully set in close to an hour. It sets up pretty quick, but I'm not a huge fan of waiting for that, so I was doing pocket screws here, and I did actually use a lot of pocket screws. I didn't account for that on my price. That probably another I don't know, I probably use 10 bucks of pocket screws at least. So, 10 bucks pocket screws, 10 bucks drawer slides, we'll say, and then 30 bucks on 1x6s. So, this one is a uh, majority done. Uh, I need top still, build drawer, and I need, I'm going to put this small bracket right here. This will sit three quarter back exactly, and I'll use a piece of three quarter to get that one set just so I know exactly where that drawer is going to sit perfectly flush with the uh, face of this. 
I'm going to get started on the next one after I get this piece in quick. So like I was saying before, I was rudely cut off by the next video. Um, it was 10 bucks for the screws, 10 bucks for the drawer slides, and 30 bucks for the one buys. That would be 50 bucks there. And then the handles that I used were some, some shop stock. You might have noticed they're the same handles that I used in my trailer. I'm not sure if I have a video of my trailer with the handles on it, but those, we ordered those handles for my trailer because I need something, and we always use the Ravinte or however you say it, handles, and they work good for what we do with them, and haven't had any complaints so far. They also come with way more screws than you'd ever need, so our shop stock on those, I want to say they're eight thirty second screws, but I can't even remember exactly what they are. Our stock on those is pretty crazy, so it's good to have that stuff around because they're good for a few other things too. Outlets, I believe, are the same screw size, and I'm sure there's more, but I can't really think of them off the top of my head. Anyway, I believe it was this part of the video that I made a mistake. Uh, those bottom supports for the bottom shelf, I put them, I believe I put the tops at four inches and I put, or no, I drew a line at two inches. Uh, what the hell am I trying to say here? No, I did draw a line at four inches and I was going to put them under that towards the bottom of the table, but I ended up putting them on top by accident. Easy fix, just switched around and wiped off the glue. So I just wrapped up the shells of these end tables. So far they're coming along pretty good. Got them all pocket screwed and wood glued. Once that wood glue fully sets on everything will be a pretty solid unit. It wobbles a little tiny bit. Could be from this concrete or one of the feet just needs to sand down a little bit so it doesn't wobble as much. Or at all, hopefully. But we'll see. I'm gonna start working on the drawers, probably put the slides on and get some measurements for the drawers. This will be the first time I've done actual drawers, ones that actually have slides. I built the the drawers in my trailer, but they are not they don't have slides or anything, they're not super special or nothing. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, best way to learn is to make mistakes. So I guess that might not be true. You I'm trying to avoid making mistakes. If the best way to learn is to make is by making mistakes, then that just doesn't sound right. Anyway, I'm going to get going on this and I'll kind of see how it goes. So I don't think we've, I've gone over kind of how I've been working in the shop too much. I haven't covered it and for my videos you can tell that I'm not really set up because I'm working on a folding table and it's kind of a pain when you don't have a flat surface to work on and when it's really flimsy you probably can't tell in the video but when I'm sanding or moving around quite a bit on the table it wobbles a lot so i think that's probably one of my next projects is building a table for the shop hopefully on wheels so i can wheel around as a outfeed for the table saw as well because i like ripping my sheets all the way down on a on the table saw and it's kind of hard to do there is an outfeed table already we have the saw stop one from saw stop it doesn't it works fine but eight foot sheets and eight foot pieces they kind of get right on the edge of teetering so it's kind of hard to move them around and i don't know i just be, i need a table regardless so i might as well make it the same height as the table saw if you want if that makes sense i guess it's just easier that way to have it all same height and when i do the miter station i'll probably do the same height as well i do need to build a miter station as well um, dust collection is also another thing that I've been that needs focused on. It gets really dusty. We have a, a air filter, but that doesn't really keep the dust down too well, just because it's not being caught in anything. If I'm sure most of you guys would probably say that I should have done the dust collector before I even started working in here, which you're probably right. But I guess I have my priorities set in a different way and doing 
these smaller projects. And I wouldn't mind having some help for the dust collection just because it's not really something I've done before. I'm sure I could figure it out pretty easy. But we kind of haven't really talked about how we're running the piping, piping or anything. So we're kind of waiting for that as well. The table saws get kind of full of dust. So we need to get that figured out. And my miter station right now is just my 12 inch dual compound on a stand. The stand is a nice stand. It's great in the field, but for a miter station, it's not great. It's hard to set up jigs and whatnot for cutting pieces repeatedly just because it's it moves a little bit it's not a crazy amount but the extension arms move i wouldn't mind some t-track on either side of that miter station just to give me something i can clamp onto and make a jig for cutting pieces but i got more projects than i got time so plus i try to record as much as i can and it's hard for me to record and get work done at the same time, but doing the best you can. Uh, the next video, I did clean up the shop a little bit, so you'll see that in the next video, and it turned out pretty good. So. So it's currently 8.11 at night right now. I think I'm gonna call it a night for now. Usually this woodworking stuff that I get done is usually at night, so I get to pick and choose when I decide to leave and not. I probably stay a lot longer, but I got a fiance and a puppy to get home to, so we'll get home to them. Um, this is progress so far. Uh, definitely need to trim that face down, get it flush with the others. Uh, I did a pine frame, pine three quarter drawers here. I got these cheapo uh, drawer slides off of Amazon. Just pick it up and then roll it down like that. Get it off there. Pretty simple. It looked good. I had a piece of scrap oak laying around the shop. Uh, it kind of fits, it was like a perfect piece for both these faces. So I threw it on there just to kind of see how it looked. I'll have to ask the fiance, see what she says about it, and see if we'll be keeping those on there or not. Might have to wait, make that decision until I get this base on here and maybe the top on. I can change out this base, it's pretty easy, so we'll see. All in all, it looks pretty good. Uh, pretty easy project so far, just kind of time consuming. Not bad project though. Alright, well that's probably it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, so now that I have all that put together, the face is on, um, it's time to start the tops. I'm not exactly sure where I left off in the last video. That was about two days ago now. But I'm going to get started on these today. Zach's still here clean out some paint stuff. Anyway, uh, for some reason, I bought one by sixes for super dirty. One by sixes for the top. I don't know if I was thinking or what the hell happened, but those won't do because they're doing they're going to be 12 inches wide. So um, that's not going to work. Most of you probably know uh, one by six is five and a half inches. So five and a half plus five and a half is 11. So that's not gonna be enough. Uh, I think I was going down to 11 and a half. I think I was gonna go for a half inch over hang then three quarter on either side. I think I like the look of half better. So, Luckily I had some 1x8 lying around in the shop. I have this piece and I also have this piece. So there should be plenty for what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to get started on that and I'll get you guys set up.
So that was actually the first time I've used that trick to do some joining. Um, I saw it on, uh, I want to say his name is 317 Woodworking or something on YouTube. Um, I think I've seen it in a couple places, but his was the most recent that I've seen. Um, if you don't have a joiner, it seems to be a pretty good trick using a level against your fence. So it's cut straight and smooth for uh, if you're joining two boards together. That worked pretty good. I think it might be kind of challenging to do if your pieces were longer than mine were 22, 22 and a half or something. I think longer than that, maybe up to like four foot would probably be fine, but anything past that might be kind of challenging to do. Or run it through a table saw. Anyway, I got those cut. The joining around seems to be pretty good. Seems to be a pretty tight fit. Unfortunately, I don't have a planer, so I won't be able to plane these down, so it might be a decent amount of sanding, but we'll see. But I'll get you guys set up. Just watch me put these boards together, and we should be good. I don't think I can emphasize enough how much this pocket hole jig that I got is, how handy it is. It's just been great. The, it makes it so much easier to put pocket holes in and stuff. The, other jig I have, I keep it in my trailer now, just for if I ever need to do something like that on the job. It doesn't take up much room, so that's where I leave it. Anyway, this new one's great. You don't have to have a clamp or anything. You just have a few tools, and you're pretty much ready to do some pocket holes. The other one, you have to clamp to a piece, and then you can put holes in it. It's just, when you're doing a bunch of them, it just makes it so much easier to have this. And... Like I said, it was probably the best tool I had for this project. In the next project I did, it was very beneficial to have. Alright, so I got those glued up. Turned out pretty good. I'll let those kind of dry up before I start cutting down a little bit. Uh, we'll get the bottom shelves started now. These I can use the 1x6s, luckily. So, we'll get started on that. So I think so far one of my favorite things woodworking is building like an end table like this and making all your pieces for it. I kind of like doing all the pieces and then going in after and making a puzzle or putting a puzzle, to get, puzzle together. Sorry, I'm stuttering pretty bad. Anyway, it's kind of nice to put together a puzzle. It's, it's fun and it kind of keeps you entertained a little bit while you're doing what you're doing. Uh, the, my least favorite thing about woodworking would probably be the staining. I am not a big fan of stain or doing stain. It's kind of in the area with painting. Painting is not my favorite thing to do either, but kind of just do it and get it over with. Got those all glued up. Now it's time to cut them down to size. I really wish I had a planer because some of these in the middle kind of bowed out a little bit. I'm not sure if you guys can see that on camera. Plus this way, some of these don't sit super flat like that. Nice to have a planer to plane those down. That'll probably be the next tool that we buy, big for the wood shop at least. Uh, other than that, um, also with a planer, I don't think you can use pocket screws for these thinner boards. If you nick it with the planer, you're probably gonna have some issues so i'd have to clamp all these up and wait for the glue to dry before i did any other work to them but like now i can just run them through the table saw and get them all ready for their actual size and fit so you know, planner still would be nice but save a little bit of time this way anyway uh we'll get He's cut down to size and we'll probably sand them and stuff before we throw them on there. So I'll get you guys going.
you can see what I just did there, I taped my sides and then I set the end table on top of here and then I took my utility knife with a sharp blade on it and scored around the legs to give me perfect tight fit. I did on this other one, and then I think I got that one on camera too. You got a pretty tight fit. I think this one was probably the loosest one. It probably has a tiny 16th gap down there, but the rest of them pretty darn tight. So we'll see how this one goes. I might just record this one. Set you guys back up. down all the way out. I haven't glued it or nothing. I want to glue it before I get it snug down there. But it's going to fit for sure. Perfect tight corners all the way around. So it's looking pretty good. We'll get this glued up and we'll get it clamped on there. Alright so I got the tops on both of these. This one had uh, I put the uh, pocket screws in there. And this one I forgot to, so it's in clamps right now. It's got wood glue on it. I just I glued it and realized then realized that I forgot to pocket screw it, so I just threw it on there and clamped it, got it where it needed to be. So I'll let that set up for a little bit, and I'll probably work on some of these drawer pulls. I think we're going with black three and quarter. I think is what they are, but I'll show you guys the end product of these before they stain before they're stained. Uh, after I get these handles on and once that dries up so I can take those clamps off. So here is what they look like before stain. This is the last you'll see of them before I stain them. I'm building a TV stand next. So I was going to throw all for my new living room so all these will go together. So I'm going to stain them all at once instead of doing them all separate. But that's how they look. I think they turned out pretty good. Use these three inch black is it Ravinte? Ravinte handles or something. Just some Amazon handles we use for pretty much all of our jobs. We have a bunch overstock, so I use some of these. They're pretty nice handles. Simple. Uh, but I think that's it for this video. Uh, next video will be Probably on the TV stand if I decide to video that one. It's, I don't mind videoing, but I also don't mind getting work done. It's kind of a. Geez, I think there was a cat outside. Kind of scared the hell out of me. Anyway, it's kind of hard to video and get work done at the same time, so we'll see. Uh, regardless, I'll show you guys what they all look like after they're stained and done and whatnot. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey everybody, how's it going? So today is uh, day two of, I guess it's not technically day two, it's just next day of building some things for my new rental house that we were renting. Uh, today I'm building a TV stand. Um, it's gonna be as simple as I can make it pretty much, but I'll keep you guys videoed so you can watch it all go down.